My parents, upon leaving, they lost their restaurant. That was their livelihood. I saw my father cry because for 20 years, he worked so hard, it just took everything out of him. They told us um, you could have one suitcase we first went to what was called an assembly center. There was four of us in, in this one horse's stall. Uh, this is um, our family number that we are assigned to. We had to keep it on our clothing. We had to wear this wherever we went, especially when we are assigned to different places. We got on a train and they had it, all the blinds closed. We couldn't open it up. And we ended up in Utah and they assigned us a barracks. There were these guard towers where sentries were stationed with their firearms. My brother was in the army. He was fighting over there in Italy, in Southern France. And his, and his mother and father and his younger son is in a camp. So when I got into high school, I felt uh, very strongly of assimilation. And so I joined the Junior Statements Club, the German Club, the high school band, and the a cappella choir. I did feel I had to approved my Americanness. I wanted to just blend into the woodwork and not make any waves or anything. When the Korean War started in 1950, I um, enlisted in the U.S. Army and um, served um, my three years to prove my loyalty. I don't think I ever had felt that I should prove my, my uh, American feelings of loyalty. I was born an American, and I was, everything that I, I read and studied and learned was that I was an American. Well, right now they're talking about Muslims. They're not, a, they don't want Muslim to come in, you know, but I don't think that's right. What's happening to the, uh, Muslims right now is it's really close to um, the hearts of the Japanese Americans because uh, it happened to us. Especially during a crisis, uh, people forget the Constitution and what it guarantees for everyone. And so we have to be on guard constantly. Otherwise, and some of these people will take over and uh, make it difficult for certain people.